dear students in this video lecture we are going to see what is meant by electron transport chain how it is present there in the living organisms and what are the two common types that is an oxidative phosphorylation related electron transport chain then a photophosphorylation related electron transport chain and finally we are going to look at what is its function and how ATP is synthesized due to operation of the electron transport chain. So this electron transport chain, first we look at where it is present. It is present there in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. If you closely look at this image, you can able to see the presence of mitochondria there in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. Or else, they can be present there in the plasma membrane of the bacterium. So, it's eukaryotes carrying the electron transport chain and the process in mitochondrion inner membrane. However, bacteria it will be present there in the plasma membrane. So, the same point have been shown here. Prokaryotic plasma membrane will be commonly present there in the in prokaryote they are present in the plasma membrane. Whereas its inner mitochondrial membrane is a location in which the electron transport chain will be present. Now we will look at the introduction related to electron transport chain. The majority of energy conserved during catabolism reaction is converted into ATP at near end of the metabolic series of reaction. That is series of reactions will be carried out there by the electron transport chain. An electron transport chain couples chemical reaction between an electron donor that is electron donator from NADH to a terminal electron acceptor which is usually an oxygen or oxidized form of inorganic compound such as a nitrate and sulfate. Simultaneously during this process protons are crossing across the membrane. These protons form into a gradient. Okay, That gradient established is called as a proton gradient. And this particular force is called as a hemiosmotic force. Further, the protons will try to move back across the membrane and that particular proton-based energy is used for driving the ATPase pump which in turn helps in the synthesis of ATP. Okay. There are two types of electron transport chain which I have already told there in the introduction. Electron transport chain functional by extracting energy from sunlight. Some electron transport chain will be operating there in the photosynthetic organism and the type of a phosphorylation involved there is called as a photophosphorylation. And from reactions such as oxidations of sugars, an electron transport chain will be operating that is called as a respiratory or respiration based electron transport chain which is basically referred as a oxidative phosphorylation. So, this photophosphorylation will be commonly taking place in certain photosynthesis involved structures such as a chloroplast. However, the oxidative phosphorylation is commonly involved there in the mitochondria if the organism is a eukaryote or else it will be operating in the cell membrane, membrane if the organism is of a prokaryote. Both the Photosynthetic and respiratory electron transport chains are major sites of premature electron leakage to oxygen. So, these are again some of the sites in which superoxide radicals could be produced. They can able to impose an oxidative stress on the living organism. Now, we look at into the definition for the electron transport chain. Electron transport chain consume a series of protein that are participating in a redox reaction. Redox means reduction and oxidation reaction that are involved in transfer of electrons from certain electron donors such as NADH and FADH2 to certain electron acceptor such as oxygen, nitrate or sulfate. The transfer of electrons, second point, the transfer of electron is coupled to the translocation of protons across the membrane. This in turn producing a proton gradient, which is the one I have already narrated. The proton gradient is used to produce a useful work. Say for example, the proton gradient can be used for 
flagellar rotation or it can be used in the ATP pump for synthesis of ATP. So this is a very short introduction over the electron transport chain. Now we will look at into what are the components that have been present there in an electron transport chain. So these components are having some differences there. In a eukaryotic organism there will be some small difference and in the prokaryote again a few differences could be present there. And some organisms in prokaryote are best studied examples. Say for example uh, mammalian cell including the bovine heart and rat liver are those that have been studied extensively for the functioning of the electron transport chain there in the mitochondria. If you look at into the bacteria, it is actually some organisms such as a Paracoccus denitrificans is the one which serves as a model organism for conducting electron transport studies there in the bacteria. So like that some organisms are serving as a model organism to study in detail about the functioning of the electron transport system. Any kind of an electron transport system will be having following four complexes. Complex 1, complex 2, complex 3, complex 4. Okay. I will try to show these complexes again in that image also. Complex 1 is a NADH dehydrogenase complex. It is also called as a NADH ubiquinone oxidoreductase complex. This EC refers to the enzyme name, nomenclature classification of the enzyme number details have been provided here. Like that the second one is called as a succinate dehydrogenase or succinate ubiquinone oxidoreductase enzyme complex. Third one and fourth one are basically cytochrome. The third is cytochrome BC1 complex. That is cytochrome B as well as C will be present together. And the last one is referred as a cytochrome C complex. Or it is called as a cytochrome oxidase or cytochrome AA3 complex. Before going into the detail of the various complexes and the functioning of electron transport chain, we understand some basic about the electron transport chain. In both the process that have been shown in the left hand side and right hand side, the energy has been synthesized. You look at the left hand side process, it is actually a physico chemical process. You can consider it as a physico chemical process. Hydrogen has been mixed with the oxygen that will help in the production of a huge amount of energy as well as heat. Now we will look at this video which demonstrates how a hydrogen and oxygen when combined together how much of heat and energy has been getting derived there. Let's get started with this balloon filled with 100% oxygen gas. Okay. I'm just going to bring this flame uh -huh. right next to it and... Okay, yep. <coughs> Sorry, I'm going to do a lot you, of this. You, you expected a big explosion, right? Sure, I kind of led you up to that. Yeah. Now, what happened is the flame melts the balloon. The oxygen inside might make the flame on the stick burn a little bit more brightly, mm -hmm. but there was no appreciable fuel there. Right, it okay? just kind of popped because It just of, popped, yeah. and that was it. Now, on oh, the no. other hand, this balloon in front of us okay. is actually filled with 100% hydrogen. Okay. And it's surrounded by about 20% oxygen in the atmosphere. Alrighty. And this stick is really long, so we can back away okay. and you can extend your arm okay. and bring it just below the bottom of the balloon. Uh huh. And bring it up to the balloon. Okay. Burst the balloon. <laughs> Whoa. Right. Okay. That was appreciably yep. different. Now you can able to understand what is the effect of combining the hydrogen and oxygen and how much of a energy and light is being produced there. So an analogous process is taking place there in the living organism during the operation of the electron transport chain. However, here the suddenly released energy that has been shown in the left hand side that is in a physical chemical process is mediated here by biochemical process as a controlled release of energy. So Again, in the total process of electron transport chain, the hydrogen has been combined with the oxygen. This hydrogen is carried with the help of reducing equivalents such as NADH and FADH2. So, these electron carriers are carrying the hydrogen containing electron in the electron transport chain. 
So again, when the hydrogen is combined with oxygen, a lot of energy will be released. However, here it's a controlled release of energy. The controlled released energy is being again captured there in the ADP and it is converted into ATP with the help of the ATP synthase enzyme. Again, as that of the physicochemical process, finally, the oxygen will be one that is converted there into water molecule. That is, oxygen accepts the electron that have been originating there from the hydrogen molecule and finally, it is getting converted into water. Now, we will look at into how this components of the electron transport chain have been arranged there in a eukaryotic mitochondria or in a prokaryotic membrane. So, this is an image showing the prokaryotic membrane arrangement of the electron transport chain. Whereas, this is the other image that has been showing the arrangement of the electron transport chain there in the eukaryotes. So, you can able to see the folding of the inner membrane as a crystal structure. So, this is the crystal structure. There you can able to see the matrix space. You can able to see the intermembrane space. This is an intermembrane space. Why I am saying these things are intermembrane space is the place where a proton gradient has been formed. That particular intermembrane space proton gradient later fuels the synthesis of ATP. You can able to look at the ATP synthase that have been operating there at this end. Say if you closely look at the folding of the crystal is being shown here in which two electron transport chains are arranged simultaneously. This is one electron transport chain. This is another electron transport chain. Whatever proton gradient that have been established have been further used to fuel the ATP synthase that is located at the end of an electron transport chain in a diagram that has been visually shown here. Here you can able to see the four components that have been commonly listed there in the electron transport chain. That is component 1, component 2, component 3, component 4. If you look at into the perspective of a eukaryotic organism, the component 3 and 4 are commonly present both if it is of a prokaryote or eukaryote. However, the presence of the complex 1 and complex 2 may be varying. Say for example, you look at this electron transport chain that is in the right hand side. It is starting there directly from the component 2 and end into the component 4. Whereas the one that have been shown in the left hand side starts with a component 1 and then directly goes into component 3 and then 4. Okay, this component 1 is NADH oxidoreductase. All these component 1 and component 2 are involved in channeling the reduced equivalents that have been synthesized through metabolism. Say, reduced equivalents are synthesized by glycolysis process or they can be even synthesized by a operation of citric acid cycle. So, citric acid cycle can be able to synthesize a lot of reduced equivalents. Those reduced equivalents are all will be directly put there into the first component of the electron transport system. Whereas, this FADH2 is the one which is synthesized there during this particular process. That is conversion of succinate there into fumarate. In this particular step that have been operating there during the TCA cycle operation, a lot of FADH2 will be formed. This FADH2 are directly channeled there into the second component of the electron transport chain. So, that is the one that have been shown here. The same thing has been depicted there in a prokaryotic electron transport chain. So, this is a prokaryotic organism. The name of the organism is Paracoccus denitrificans in which a electron transport chain has been operating. So, this is cytoplasm. This is an extracellular environment and this region is specifically referred there by the term periplasm. So, this is the cell membrane. In the cell membrane, different complexes have been arranged. It includes complex 1, complex 2, complex 3 and complex 4. If you carefully look at the complex 2, a part of the complex has been associated there in the cytoplasm. Say, cytoplasm is the place in which the citric acid cycle or tricarboxylic cycle will be operating. Especially during the step in which succinate is converted into fumarate, 
it produces a lot of FADH2. So this FADH2 will be directly channeled there into the Q cycle from which it continues there into the electron transport chain. 